The stadium where the Hawkeyes play is named after a legendary Iowan, Niall Clark Kinnick Jr., born in 1918. A natural athlete, Kinnick led his high school football team to an undefeated season. Kinnick began playing football for Iowa in 1936 as a halfback. According to legends, he initially attempted to apply to Minnesota, but was rejected for being too small and too slow. There's no evidence of this having happened. Other stories claim that Kinnick chose to go to Iowa rather than Minnesota because Minnesota was on top and Iowa was struggling, having had a series of mediocre seasons in the 30s. Admittedly, Iowa's football failures continued once Kinnick joined the team, with the team winning a single game each in 1937 and 1938. Still, Kinnick was a rare bright spot for Iowa fans. In 1937, he led the nation in punting and was chosen for both the All-American team and the All-Big Ten team. Kinnick also played basketball for Iowa and was the school's second leading scorer. In 1938, during his junior year, Kinnick broke his ankle during football practice. Kinnick refused to see a doctor because he was a devout Christian science practitioner, a term I use only because that is what they call themselves. Self-described Christian scientists generally abstain from medical treatment, instead relying on prayer to fix injuries. Kinnick played through the pain and managed to be an honorable mention for the All-Big Ten team, but clearly played worse than the year before. Kinnick finally had a winning season during his senior year. Iowa went from having a single win yearly to only losing a single game. Kinnick was once again added to the All-American and All-Big Ten teams, was named as Associated Press's Athlete of the Year, beating out Joe Lewis and Joe DiMaggio, earned the Maxwell Award and the Walter Camp Memorial Trophy. Most notably, he won the 1939 Heisman Trophy, a feat no other Hawkeye has replicated. During his acceptance speech, he noted that he was happy to be warring on the gridirons of the Midwest and not on the battlefields of Europe, a dark foreshadowing of things to come. There are many legends about Niall Kinnick, few of them true. One story claims that, during a game between Iowa and Michigan, Kinnick was stopped right at the goal line. The officials initially called the play as a touchdown, but Kinnick confessed that he had been stopped, costing Iowa the game. This story is likely false. Kinnick only played Michigan twice, with neither game having any contemporary reports of the incident. Another story claims that, during the 1939 game against Notre Dame, Kinnick suggested switching to right halfback because he had broken ribs on his right side. The switch-up caught Notre Dame off guard and allowed Kinnick to score a winning touchdown. Although Kinnick did score a touchdown after switching to right halfback, the decision was made by the team's quarterback and other players refute the idea that Kinnick's ribs were broken. After college, now Kinnick turned down an offer to play for the Dodgers, instead choosing to study law at the University of Iowa. He also worked as an assistant football coach as he studied. It is speculated that Kinnick was planning a career in politics. His grandfather, George Clark, had been the governor of Iowa, and Kinnick introduced 1940 presidential candidate Wendell Wilkie at a campaign rally. In 1939, the Marion Sentinel speculated he would one day run for president. In 1990, Ronald Reagan claimed Kinnick could have been president. These speculations, admittedly, feel a bit far-fetched. We cannot speculate how a man who never ran for office would have done in actual elections especially when we know little about what his policies would have been by the time he was eligible for office. In 1941, Nal Kinnick left law school and joined the Naval Air Reserve, training to become a fighter pilot. In 1943, during a routine training flight, Kinnick's plane developed an oil leak, forcing him to land in the ocean. According to legend, Kinnick deliberately chose to crash into the ocean to spare the crew of the carrier from danger. In reality, he never could have made it back to the ship, and even if he could have, landing in the water was standard military procedure. Kinnick died in the landing. He was 24 years old. Now Kinnick's body was never found. It sank beneath the waves off the coast of Venezuela, dragged down with the plane. In 1972, the University of Iowa retired his number and renamed the stadium after Niall Kinnick. Curiously, the only other retired Iowa jersey number, that of Cal Jones, also belonged to a player who died in a plane crash. Now Kinnick seems to be a magnet for false stories of his greatness. I am left asking myself, why? Why must we lie to make our heroes greater? Why do we need to consider Now Kinnick a paragon of virtue for him to have been a great man? Why does his death need to have been a sacrifice for it to be tragic? Why does he need to have been the future president who would have made things right? 
Why isn't it enough for now Kinnick to have been a good man and a damn good football player who died in a tragic accident far too soon? Why do we need myths for our heroes to feel real?